Hello everyone, it's Daryl. How are you guys doing today? We have a little home repair project for you today involving the automatic humidifier on your furnace. And, you know, the humidifier attachment is a nice thing to have on your furnace. It provides extra moisture in the air in the wintertime, which makes it feel warmer in a house. You don't have to run your temperatures high. It also puts enough moisture in the air so that it makes it easier to breathe. You don't wake up in the morning with dry mouth or dry sinuses. And, it also keeps your furniture, if you have nice wooden furniture, it keeps furniture from drying out and cracking. It's also good for your plants. So, all kinds of reasons you want to keep your humidifier working properly. And one of the easiest things that can go wrong with it, or I should say most common things that can go wrong with it, is the solenoid valve that mounts on the side of it. So we're going to show you here what we're talking about. Uh, this is the solenoid valve I've removed from my furnace and it mounts. We'll show you in a minute. We'll go down there in a minute and show it to you. But I wanted to give you the details of it first. Uh, you have an inlet side and an outlet side and they're both marked but on the inlet side this one became clogged and it wasn't letting any water in. And what tipped us off to that was that when the furnace would come on we'd hear a loud clicking and vibrating sound coming from downstairs. And I went down there while the furnace was on and I isolated the problem and I could feel this here was like shaking almost. You could feel it just vibrating like crazy inside like an electrical vibration. So I shut the water supply off to it, took it apart and found this was all corroded inside with water, rust and build up calcium and I said you know I could try and clean it, soak it in some vinegar or some rust remover solvent but it is probably, I don't know, maybe 12, 14 years old. So I said to myself, I'm just going to get a new one. So we looked at the numbers on the S and we looked up online and there's a whole bunch of different uh, repair parts that are available for this. I went with this particular part here and you can see here it's got the part number UHS99 Universal Humidifier Solenoid 99 replaces 99% of all the solenoids that are on furnaces. It gives you a name and part number of all the ones here that it replaces. I got this on eBay. It was delivered in about four working days from the time I ordered it. And it was $31, including shipping. So, I mean, there's no instructions or any details with it other than the part number and who makes it. And honestly, you really don't need instructions. It's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it's... Well, we're going to show you how easy it is to replace this. So it's it's really not hard at all. Really, the only tool you would need to replace it with would be, ideally, an adjustable wrench like this. And if you don't have one of those handy, some slip joint pliers. Um, those will do the trick, too. Very, very simple job. And we're going to show you how we did it. I'm sure most of you know this already, but we're going to go over it real quick. Anyway, briefly, this is the hang-on humidifier box that hangs on to your bonnet on top of your furnace, also called the plenum, I believe, and uh, it's got two positions, open and closed, and you got to turn it to open in the wintertime and close it in the summertime when you turn your central air on, so you keep it in the open position so that air can flow through it. Inside here we have a pipe running up the top that brings water in. Water falls down through this fitting here and into a, a metal mesh panel. It kind of looks like a furnace filter, like a mini furnace filter, except it's made out of uh, aluminum, I believe it's aluminum mesh, and the water cascades and trickles down that aluminum mesh behind this panel here, and as it's trickling down, air from the furnace is being diverted out this way. Oh, actually, it's the wrong way. Air through the cold air return here is being diverted through it this way, and it's pulling that warm water into the plenum and distributing it out through the ductwork into the house to keep your house nice and humid in the wintertime. So then the excess water that doesn't get sucked up into the system comes out into this catch pan here, down a rubber hose, into a PVC tubing, and down into a little sump pump down on the floor that pumps it out into the drainage system. And that water mess down there is just what leaked out of the system while I was doing this repair and um, nothing to worry about. It'll dry up and I'll wipe it up in a few minutes. There is electricity going through these two wires here. So when you take this apart to change this, make sure you 
shut the furnace off too. Click that little switch to shut your furnace off, how, how, or however your furnace actually works to shut it off. That way you won't risk getting a little zap when you accidentally touch both those wires at once and the furnace happens to try and come on. So you don't want to get poked or electrocuted while you're doing this. I don't think that's a high voltage. I think that's a low voltage circuit where it wouldn't really hurt you, but it'd still be uncomfortable. So make sure you cut the power to it before you do it. Keep safety in mind all the time. Maybe even wear safety glasses in case some bit of water. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. Shut the water off before you take this apart. You have to follow your supply line back and shut the, usually they're set up on a saddle tap or some sort of system with the easy water shut off. There's my saddle tap right there. You shut that little valve off and that shuts the water off here. coming over to here. This is our universal solenoid here. When the furnace comes on, as it just did, contact is made through these two, a voltage is applied through these two wires here, which opens a little electric motor pin in there, which allows the water to flow from the water supply line here, up this way, into the humidifier. So what happened is this got all rusted and corroded, and I had to take this loose here, using my wrench, and this one loose here, using my wrench, and then there's two thumb screws, one down bottom, one top, you remove those and then the whole solenoid lifts right off two electrical wires here they have wire nuts you just remove the wire nuts separate the wires from the wire coming out of the furnace and you're good to go and there is uh, doesn't matter which wire goes on which terminal they're both it's just a little simple circuit that doesn't require any polarity or anything like that so just put them back on and you're good to go and that's really all there was to it I say it. These things set over the summertime when they're not in use and they get sticky from all that rust it poses. If you have hard water, rust is constantly accumulating on metallic pieces inside the system and when they don't move for an extended period of time, like during the summer, then they tend to get stuck. And actually it's been about a year and a half since this failed on me. I haven't bothered to change it until now. The actual water valve on the other end of this became seized up and broken as well and I had to replace the saddle tap it's called on the water line on the other side because that had become corroded and clogged up as well. Another view of it here, the solenoid is a simple repair that you can certainly do yourself. It's very simple. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Think about doing some of these little home repairs yourself. Save yourself some money. I say that was whatever it was, $31. That was uh, a small expense to pay compared to, you know, probably a $200 bill to have a service tech come out and replace that valve. Have a great day. Bye for now.